All righty. Hello, everybody. Today, I'm going to talk about players. Uh, that's kind of what the game is centered around, is you have a team, you're making a formation, and uh, the goal is to get more powerful players. So when you pull up a player, there's quite a bit of stuff to look at um, when looking at making them stronger. Um, starting from the top, you can see uh, something called Superb Power Up. Uh, then just to the bottom left of that, it says Level 60, Max Level 60. Um, to the left of that, there's max hit point increase by 30%. Um, and then going down to the player on the far left, you see the picture of them. Uh, there's a clover leaf for the luck that the player has. And then below it, in the bottom right corner, you see a plus 120 stat increase. The other thing that players have are skill points. And as you level up a player and as you put superb power up, material trained into them, you get additional skill points, um, and it goes from there. Uh, so basically what I'm going to start with is a low-level player. So when you first start out, you get a lot of two-star characters, three-star, some four-star, and then rarely uh, you get some five-star or even some legendary six-star characters. So starting with a two-star player, if you look up to the top, this character does not have any superb power-ups. Those are all empty. Uh, his current level is 1, his max level is 20, and he does not have any max hit point increase. Um, right now he's at 1%, and he has the ability to go up um, all the way to 30%. Also with skills, um, there's an active skill and there's three passive skills. Every player defaults to have one skill point automatically assigned in their active skill, and zero in their other three passives. As you level up a character, every five levels you get one skill point. Uh, so for this level uh, 20, for the max level character, he can have four skill points assigned in addition to the one that he currently has. So of all of these um, skills, you can only have five maximum for a two-star character. Um, it goes up two for every character above that. So three-star characters have a total of six skill points, one for every level, plus the additional one they start with. Four-star characters have eight skill points, five-star have 10, six-star have 12, um, that they go up for one skill point every five levels. So Hero is one of the characters that I have completely maxed. Um, when looking at them, you can see that I've got all five superbs in him. He has been special trained because um, he started as a five-star character, special trained up to a six-star character, so his max level increased to 60, and I did all of the um, teamwork character um, story thing after the match where you can increase their hit points by a max of 30%, and I got that done. Um, you can also get skill points from superb power-up training, uh, so let's talk about that for a second. If you use the same character as material, then that's called a superb. So if we grab Paulina as a character, and we equip her and we're getting ready to train. If I take a copy of Paulina now as training material, you'll see this thing light up over the character picture and it'll say superb power up. And then if you look at the little um, icons or whatever they're called from the superb power up to the right, you'll see that now the first one is glowing. Uh, the thing with the superb power up too is that the player also gets a stat increase. So as you can see from the uh, power technique, vitality, and speed, you can see that those are um, getting additional stats in them. Uh, there's also experience for the player. So training a, um, whatever this character is, level 8 character into another level 8 character. Uh, it's 6,756 experience because it is the same attribute. So they get one and a half times the ex training experience. And the main character, it would go up two levels to then level 10. So I would recommend doing this on all characters, but obviously there's priorities on who uh, to start with. Usually two-star characters, three-star characters, they're not going to be as strong. So once you get the more powerful characters, those are the ones that you're going to want to put uh, copies of themselves into. Uh, so like with Hero or other five-star characters, uh, if you get copies of themselves and they're used in your formation and they're a vital part of your team, definitely recommend superbing or power, uh, superb power-up training 
them into um, themselves for those superb power-ups. It's pretty hard to get copies of legendary players to train into themselves for these superb power-ups. So that is the benefit of Litre. He is one of the gatekeepers. He's an Ardor. He's the Ardor gatekeeper. And basically, if you evolve the three-star Litres into a five-star Litre, you can use the five-star Litre as a superb power-up for a five-star or six-star player. Now you have to have five three-star Litres and 96,000 gold to be able to evolve them. Um, I already did that on my previous one and I only have one three-star Litre left. Um, so I am nowhere close to five to do that again. To train three-star Litres into two-star, three-star, or four-star characters, for their superb power up, I would not recommend. You're going to get copies of the two, three, and four star characters over time, um, unless it's something that you really need that's vital to your formation and, and what you need. Obviously, uh, an example of this is Eden. Um, she was a four star character that I had. Um, luckily, I did have five copies of Eden that I have eventually trained in her, so I was not, I didn't have to use any three star lead trays to get those last superb power ups. Um, but a couple of my friends did, and once again, you got to do what you got to do for your formation and what you want with that. All right, so now we want to talk about training. Uh, one way to get characters up to their max level is through experience. Well, that's the only way. Uh, you get experience through uh, playing matches um, and also training. One thing you may want to look at is that there are a few different managers that you can use that will increase uh, the game reward experience. If you have any of these trainers, so here's Eve for an example, you can see that her passive says increase game reward experience by 25%. Um, if you don't have her, then you probably have the three star uh, Iluel or whoever you pronounce her name. Uh, there's also a four star character named Olivia who also increases game reward experience. And then I don't have uh, Ian, she's the other five star character. Uh, but I do have Eve, and she increases game reward experience. So you would want to equip both of those managers if you're really looking for um, an increase to game reward experience as you play uh, through the games and that. Um, for training experience, there's a couple different things that you want to, uh, to look at. Uh, there is a trainer, there's a couple of trainers. There's one named Anne and uh, Euphemia who increase the training experience by a certain percent. Uh, obviously, depending on how many superbs you have in them. Uh, here's the five-star character, Euphemia. She increases that acquired training experience by 5%. So if you are training penguins or any sort of characters into other players to increase their level, equipping um, one of those two or both of those um, managers is a great idea. Uh, so Anne is the other one. She's a four-star character. She increases, once again, the acquired training experience by 5%. For special training, when you want to talk about that, you have characters, like I mentioned, at a base star count. So you have two star, three star, four star, five star, and uh, six star characters. In order to increase their base star and get their max level from, let's say, a two star character whose max level is 20 to go up into a three star character who could have a max level is 30, what you need to do is special train them. So in order to get to that, you have a little tab up here called special training. And you want to select the character. Now they have to be a max at that level. So I can select Rosette, but it, as you can see down at the bottom, it's going to say insufficient level because she's not a max level 20 character uh, who could be used for that. But they did update it recently. And you can now, instead of having two um, level to, um, sorry, level 20 two-star characters in order to special train, all you need is any level two-star characters. So if Rosetta was level 20, I would be able to special train her right now to be a three-star level one player. So you can also do that with the three-star characters. Uh, you would just need additional three stars, which I think I sold all of my other ones. But for three stars, I'll just use Mera as an example. But I wouldn't recommend that. I definitely save and evolve all of your three star Maras into the five star Mera, so that way it can use as a five star material. Um, but once again, we can go into gatekeepers and stuff 
more, but three-star player, to special train them, you need three three-star characters, and then they will become a four-star character. If you have a four-star character, once again, you need four four-star players, and then it would become a five-star player. And then lastly, if you have a five-star player, you then need five five-star characters in order to special train them into a six-star character. All right, so now we're going to talk about stat increases. Uh, as you can see with my hero, he is plus 120, so he is completely maxed out. If you go back to his skill, or sorry, his ability, then you can see he's plus 30, plus 30, and then I have a manager right now that's increasing my power and speed by 15. That's why you see plus 45 on both of those. Uh, but he is completely maxed out. In order to get stat increases, what you have to do is train uh, swirlies, um, black hole swirlies or Beezlebub, who is a gatekeeper, into a character. So if I grab Duke for an example, um, if you train a Beezlebub, so that is a gatekeeper, into a player, if you just use the three star version, uh, then only one stat is going to be increased by plus five. Now, if you have five Beezlebubs and you can evolve them into the five star Beezlebub, which is what I would recommend, uh, then all stats will increase by seven when using him as training material. So if you train that Beezlebub into a player, you get a total of plus 28 stat increases uh, as opposed to the plus five that you would get from a three star. Uh, and even if you used all five three stars individually into a character, that's only plus 25, so you still get a, an additional three stat increases from a five star character than if you were to use five three stars. Now, you do save on gold depending on the level of the character that you're training, um, and the 96,000 gold that it takes to evolve the five three star Beezlebubs into a five star um, is definitely a lot more costly than if you just need a, a plus five for a last stat that needs to go up or something like that. But we'll get into that more a little bit. So as you train, um, Beezlebub is the big thing. If you can get a five-star Beezlebub in there, uh, then that's huge. If you get swirlies of the same color, um, a five-star swirly automatically gives you a 100% chance that they will get between a plus one or plus three stat increase for one stat. If you don't have a five-star swirly, you can use four-star and three-star swirlies, um, but there's different percentages that each one will do. Every four-star swirly of the same color is going to give you a 30% chance. So what I typically do is three four-star swirlies for 90%, and I don't have a three-star swirly for that extra 12%, but I like the 100% guaranteed that I am going to get a stat increase. It does cost a lot more gold, <laughs> but uh, I think it's worth it in the long run because all you need is that you know few time that you do not get the increase from a 90% uh, chance or something like that, and then you just wasted three four-star swirlies, and that's not too fun. So typically what I do is three four-star swirlies and then one three-star swirly for that guaranteed 100% power-up chance. Now, for a level 60 character who's already been special trained up to the max, it's 11,000 gold per material when you're training them. So this is 44,000 gold that I would be spending to possibly get Karel up anywhere between one and three stat points. So I don't have that much gold right now, so I can't do it. But if you wanted, you could risk it and just train one swirly at a time for a really low percentage rate in there, which I don't recommend, but you do have the ability to add up various swirlies. If you don't have a swirly of the same color, you can use other swirlies, but it's a reduced rate. So a five-star swirly of a different attribute is only an 85% power-up success rate, whereas if it's the same color or same attribute, it's 100%. So obviously if you need them into a certain character, you can mix and match and use other swirlies from different attributes, but once again, to get 100% and to use two of them for double the gold off of what it would be if you had a green swirly for, or a whirlwind swirly for a whirlwind player, uh, then obviously that's the best. Um, so those are swirlies. Um, the other way to do it is through a black hole swirly. He is one of the um, special cards, which I don't have. I already 
use both of mine to evolve uh, linea, I believe. But if you use the black hole swirly, you get an automatic plus four stat increase on one stat. And lastly, what I want to touch on is the story tab. So they just added this these character chain events. And this is another way to increase um, a player's stats if you use this, this player on your formation or if they happen to be on the opponent's formation. So with Hero, if I used either of these two characters and they were either in my formation or my opponent's, Hero would increase his reflexes and action speed by 10% um, if that character was on his formation or on the opponent's. So you can go through each of these character chains um, to get additional stat increases. So if either one of these dark characters were on my team or the opponents, Hero would get an increased attack power and hit point boost of 30%. Um, in order to activate these chains, um, let me get to a player that doesn't have one of them activated, um, you have to play games. Well, first you have to have the character. Um, if you don't have the character, then you can't start the chain. So if I go to Zebroy, uh, the last chain that I have, I need a character, five-star light character called Celis. As soon as I get him, then I can start this chain, and I have to win a certain amount of games with any of these players, Avner, Celis, or uh, I think it's Gene, um, on the same team, or Sage, <laughs> uh, on the same team, or the opponent's team, and then that chain will be activated, it'll be complete, and then when any player is um, on there, then they will get those stat increases in the game. All right, another thing to talk about is evolving characters. Um, so pretty much all characters can be evolved other than the special cards. And when you are on the ability tab, you'll be, be able to see in the bottom the materials needed to evolve a player. So once you have that, you can click on the evolve tab and it'll bring that up and then you'll be able to click the button that says evolve if you have all the necessary materials and the gold um, to evolve that. Um, as you can see, you can click on a um, ability on either side of the player, either the player before or after evolution, and you can read what the effect does right now, and then you can click on it when you're going to evolve them and see what that is going to change to. Uh, most characters have a lot better skills as they evolve. Other characters do different things when you evolve them. So depending on your formation and what you use the character for, you may or may not want to evolve them. Uh, typically that's in terms of the extreme evolution, but it can be other ones as well. Um, so evolving a player, you can see uh, for this one, I have Acilia. Her power would pretty much stay the same. Her technique would go up by 24, her vitality increases, uh, and her speed increases for that current level that she's at. Um, and then it can go from there. So obviously evolving characters can also make them stronger, uh, different abilities as well. You just have to have the proper materials. Um, for lower characters, it's mainly elementals, uh, especially two and three star players. There's three star, four star, and five star elementals of that same attribute that will be needed in order to evolve that character. Uh, once you evolve them, then for some five star characters, they have an extreme evolution. So here's my Latios that I have um, evolved once, and once I get a few more light five-star elementals, I'll be able to extreme evolve her. All right, so I hope that helps a bit. I know this is a lot of information, and I went by <laughs> really quickly on this. But with characters, you have skill points, you have levels, uh, you have a base star count, you have stat increases, uh, and then there's character chains, and then also the story mode max hit points that you can increase as well. Uh, the last thing to increase stats and stuff are spirit stones that you can equip on a player. We'll get into spirit stones a lot more later on, um, but for the raw base stats that a player has, it's their skills, their stat increases, um, and their level. So hopefully that helps. Uh, I know this was a brief, quick overview. Uh, if you guys have any questions or if I missed anything, definitely put it in the comments below or uh, follow me on Instagram or any one of the social media sites if you have any questions and I'll try to answer them as best I can. You guys have a great day.